In this video, we're going to see just how easy it is to get your first Docker Swarm cluster up and running. So what we'll do is, we'll deploy our swarm across multiple failure zones, so like the ones in this diagram. Now, these failure domains can obviously be in your own on-premises data centers, or in the public cloud, or even spread across both. Now, we'll install a single discovery service backend, something to maintain the state and the configuration of our swarm cluster. We'll also deploy a single swarm manager. Then, two swarm nodes. And over here, we're going to have a Docker engine client. And in future videos, right, we'll see how to leverage these failure domains and make our swarm cluster highly available. But for now, we're just going to concentrate on getting a cluster up and running. All right, let's jump onto the Manager 1 machine and install our Discovery Service backend. And to help us out as we go along, let's put this information over here. Now, this machine's already got the Docker engine installed. In fact, all of our machines do. And because we like eating our own dog food here, we're going to deploy the Discovery Service as a container. Now, Swarm actually supports a few Discovery Service backends. There's Console, etcd, Zookeeper, and Docker Hub, which we sometimes call the hosted backend. For this example, we'll go with Console. So it's Docker Run. We'll set the restart policy. Run it in the background. Map port 8500. Call it Console 1. Base it on this image. And we'll tell it what to run. Great, that should be our discovery service up and ready. Right, there it is. Now, while we're on this same host, let's kick off a swarm manager process. And we'll do it as a container again. So docker run again. We'll go with the same restart policy. Put it in the background. And this time we'll map port 3375 on the host to 2375 in the container. This will make sure that docker commands coming into this host on port 3375 get forwarded to port 2375 inside the container. And we'll come back to this later, okay? So keep it in mind. Anyway, we'll base it on the swarm image and run the manage command. This last bit here, telling it to effectively write, be the swarm manager process. And of course, we need to tell it to use our console discovery service. Another quick check. Cool. Now that's effectively the management side of our swarm cluster built and ready to go. All we need now are nodes to run some containers on. Now we can add nodes to the cluster by running more swarm containers. Only this time we'll run them with the join argument. Now we can either do this on each node that we want to join to the cluster or we can do it right here from the manager as long as we point the commands we're running to the docker engine daemons on the nodes that we're joining to the cluster. So let's stay on the manager host here and run this command. Now, what this is doing is it's running the command against the docker daemon over on node one. See its IP there? It's running a swarm container with the join command, telling it to use node one's IP, and of course, to use the console discovery backend that we just created. And that's it. That's our first node added. Same again for node two. Only we change this here to node 2's IP, and then this as well. And there we go. That's our entire cluster built. A single manager and a single discovery backend, both running as containerized apps on a single host. And then two nodes in the cluster to run our app containers on. Couldn't be simpler. Then to use the cluster, we jump over to our Docker engine client over here, where, importantly, We've got the engine client set to issue commands to our Swarm Manager machine on port 3375. Remember this up here. Commands coming into the Swarm Manager on 3375 get forwarded to the Swarm Manager container on 2375. Then the Swarm Manager container takes those commands and issues them against the cluster. So if we go docker run, put it in the background of the terminal, Ubuntu and bash. Right, then run a docker info. Remember, this is running against the cluster. And there we go. So 
three containers running on the cluster, that's the two swarm containers on each node that actually joined them to the cluster, plus our Ubuntu container that we just launched. And we can see here, it's running on node 1. Couldn't be simpler, right? Well, in the next videos, we'll see how to make the Swarm Manager and the Discovery Backend both highly available.